This video will be a basic introduction to Python and Jupyter. So in a lot of these computational chemistry applications, I'm going to be showing off some sample code and things that are just help out, uh, help us out along the way. And a lot, some of those things that we're going to use are going to be uh, the Python programming language and the Jupyter notebook. So Python is what we would call a general purpose, high level programming language. So it uh, programming language is just something where you would enter a sequence of text commands and then through some kind of interpreter you would run this program which would interpret those commands and do something and kind of display some output or some result at, at the end of the program. Um, I call it high level because you don't have to know a lot about the low uh, about the intricate inner workings of computers you just get to work with uh, fairly simple commands and general purpose because Python is one of the most common uh, programming language for everything from scientific programming to web development, data science, all kinds of engineering applications. Uh, Python is a language that you see uh, pretty ubiquitously in the, in the programming field. Okay, so we're going to use... Um, basically I want to get the things up and running as quickly as possible. So I know a lot of people are going to be using uh, Windows uh, type environments. So most of computational chemistry or kind of intense computing is going to be done in, in sort of command line uh, type environments, uh, often with Linux or Linux-like operating systems. But I want something that you can, without a whole lot of experience in this type of field, just get up and running very quickly. So for that purpose, we're going to use uh, Anaconda and the Jupyter Notebook. So Anaconda is a Python distribution, so a specific version of Python that has a lot of useful libraries that we use in scientific computing that are just inbuilt and they're there and once you download it, they just kind of work. Uh, NumPy is a Python library that works with a lot of large arrays, matrices, does a lot of numerical uh, computing type things that come up in our applications a lot. So NumPy... Uh, takes application takes a lot of things that we would have had to uh, code as functions or spend a lot of time developing on our own that sort of handles them and does them in a, in a fairly quick sort of way. So Python being a pretty high level language, it's very easy to work with, but in as a consequence of that, it's much slower to run. So using NumPy allows a lot of those functions to work a lot more quickly because under the hood of what's going on, NumPy is usually implementing these things in a very efficient fashion. Okay, then that leads us to Jupyter, which is also was formerly called the IPython Notebook. So this is kind of a browser-based, um, mine is going to show up in my Google Chrome browser, browser-based interactive computing environment that we can use for Python. So instead of having to know how command lines work and how to move around in those types of environments, you can just launch the uh, download and launch the Jupyter environment, and that's going to be much simpler for anyone who doesn't have any kind of experience working with command lines. Uh, Matplotlib, a Python library for plotting graphs and functions that I'm going to use in a lot of these demo programs. Um, hopefully that all is up and just works with whatever uh, whatever environment that you have, but uh, if not, you can just take a look at the demos that I'll be generating as we go. And then lastly, uh, there's a library called Pandas, which is a library that's very useful for all the kind of data analysis type of tools that we need to use a lot in these uh, situations. Okay, so that's a very abstract, boring kind of overview of those things. So the main important things here are to download these things. Uh, we download Anaconda from Continuum IO and, in, and the notes for uh, Jupyter from Jupyter.org. So let's take a look here. So Continuum.io. So we'd have download Anaconda from their website. And I assume they got some sort of platform specific types of types of ideas here. Yep, download for Windows, Mac, Linux, and specifically I'm going to request that you download Python 3, the Python 3 version, because that's the version that I'm going to be using in these demos. Uh, previously I was using Python 
2 in the last uh, version of these notes. I have since upgraded and have been using Python 3 for everything. So to be compatible with what I'm doing, you're going to need to install the Python 3 version. Okay, Jupyter as well, the jupyter.org website. You can have in installation notes that are there. You have the install tab up at the front there. Uh, things how to work with. And if you've never done any type of programming before uh, and you wanted to learn, this is a great time to learn. Um, pretty much anywhere on the internet you can find tons and tons of great programming tutorials. There's a wealth of information at your fingertips. Um, just use whatever uh, whatever tutorials you like. Um, Python.org has some. There's tons of of those around the internet. The only limitation is your willingness to uh, utilize them and uh, get things going. Okay, so once you get that installed and uh, downloaded and installed, then once you launch Jupyter, mine comes up in my Chrome browser and looks something like this. So I have a kind of directory structure going here. So I'm going to go into a directory, which I call Notebooks. Let's see if that's going to load there. So I'm going to do new text file. It's going to pop me up a new text file over here if that's going to open up in any kind of reasonable period of time. You never know when you're doing these live. Okay, so it shows up and it has a line marking. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to do the test that we would always do as kind of the first test in computer science of whenever you learn a new language. I'm going to make a program that just prints hello world to the screen. So I'm going to have, that's my entire program there. So I'm going to write this. So I had uh, selected I to get into insert mode. Once I hit I, it goes from having this uh, green type of cursor to this type of uh, blinking one, and then I can type anything I want into the terminal. Um, if I hit escape, I go back to this regular mode where I'm uh, in this type of situation. And then I hit colon, and I'm going to hit W for write, and hit enter. And that is going to save my file. It said file saved. Alternatively, I could have clicked and gone to file save. I could do, you know, edit, all these types of things. All my things are based off of the uh, text editor Vim. That's what I have everything set on. If you have another preference, you can do that. Okay, so I have this. I'm going to change the file, the name of this file to hello world.py. Save that. Now it's renamed. Okay, so if I go up into this directory and I kind of refresh that, now I have my hello world.py going on there. So you have a new, I'm going to select new notebooks. Um, I have an old version of this, and hopefully I'm going to select the correct one because I have my old Python 2 browser on here. So I should be using the one that's Python 3. Let's see if this is the right one. If not, we're going to have to, okay, so it says Python 3, so I guess I guessed correctly. All right, so I want to insert kind of a new cell here. All right, so it comes up with this kind of command line type prompt. So I'm going to say run. And then if I do dot slash, that's in the being in the current directory, and then I hit tab, and it comes up with all the files in my current directory. I say hello world.py. Then if I hit shift, and while holding shift hit enter, it's going to run and execute that command. So you can see it prints out hello world to the screen. So that lets me know that my notebook is working correctly. It's running uh, my program, hello world. It is printing that output to screen and I'm ready to be able to follow along with the rest of the chapter and the examples that are to come.